Beetlejuice. It's showtime. <laughs> Well, it's Halloween again, my favorite time of year. A time for ghosts, monsters, and most importantly, spooky movies. And no Halloween would be complete without a viewing of Tim Burton's classic, Beetlejuice. On this episode of Where It Was Made, we take a trip to Vermont to go to sites strange and unusual. I myself am strange and unusual. So say it once, say it twice, third time's the charm. Please don't. This is Beetlejuice, Where It Was Made. You've already said it twice. Released on March 30th, 1988, Beetlejuice celebrates its 30th anniversary this year. While much of the interior shooting took place on sound stages in Los Angeles, the exteriors were all shot in the sleepy little town of East Corinth, Vermont, close to the Vermont-New Hampshire border. So one rainy day, I took the drive up to see how the town looks 30 years after the ghost with the most paid it a visit. To film this flyover sequence, the crew went door to door asking residents to stay in their home to give the illusion of a model town from above. Founded in 1790, East Corinth is a very small town with a population of 1,461 living people and at least two ghosts. The first thing you notice when you drive in is the Village Road, the main stretch of town seen in the opening credits of the film and in Adam's model. Attention, keyboard shopper. Directly next door to the church is the building that hosted the shop owned by our main characters, the Maitlands. This was the site of the Maitlands hardware store. At the time, the location was a repurposed general store. The general store went out of business, and the building is currently undergoing massive renovations, having been gutted to the studs and raised several feet so a new foundation can be poured. This is the last stop the Maitlands make before their untimely demise. Good morning, Adam. Need a, a haircut for your vacation? No, thanks, Bill. How's the model coming? Oh, it's great. You know, you said Brosman built that foundation in 1835. Adam and Barbara were, of course, played by Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis. However, the first choice for the roles were Kirstie Alley and Bill Pullman, but Cheers wouldn't let Alley out of her contract, and Pullman turned it down. When Tim Burton settled on the name Beetlejuice for the film, the studio countered and wanted to call it House Ghosts. As a joke, Tim Burton suggested the name Scared Sheetless and was horrified when the studio actually considered using it. Good thing they went with his first choice. See you later, up Right. And now we cut to the bridge where the Maitlands meet their demise. I still don't understand how a fall like that could kill someone, but it's none of my business. I got the eyes wrong, again. The bridge seen in the film is a small bridge located on Chicken Farm Road. After filming wrapped, the bridge was taken down and repurposed for use at a local ski lodge. So here we see the site of the covered bridge where the Maitlands have their unfortunate incident on the way out of town. As you can see, there isn't a wooden covered bridge as seen in the movie that was built by the crew on top of the existing structure you see here. The car the Maitlands drive is one of the 240 series Volvos, which at the time had a reputation as being one of the safest cars on the market. It was even reported that no one had been killed in a Volvo of that series in year. So naturally, 
Tim Burton turned it into a dark joke for Volvo, when this was the car that Adam and Barbara died in. Hey, look out for that! And this is the spot where the poor Maitlands crash to the side of the bridge and go plunging into the river to their untimely deaths. Later in the film, you'll notice all the people in the waiting room in the office are in the same condition as when they died. However, the Maitlands who drowned are not wet. Originally, the plan was to have them soaked throughout the entire movie, but this was scrapped when Tim Burton felt that keeping the actors wet all the time would be too uncomfortable for them. And now let's take a trip to Lydia's house. Or at least the ghost of where my house used to be. Here we see the hilltop that played host to the home where we spend most of the film. This, of course, was the home of the Maitlands, and later, the Dietzes. The house was an exterior built solely for the film, and was torn down immediately after filming. The only thing that remains from the shooting of Beetlejuice is the driveway that you see on the way in. The open interior of the fake building was used as a basketball court by the film crew, and the roof was actually a painted canvas that sagged. When filming the exterior shots, the fake building was pressurized with giant fans to make the roof puff up and look like a real roof. This is the home where we meet the Dietz family. The role of Lydia, made famous by Winona Ryder, was originally offered to Juliette Lewis, as Ryder turned down the film. Additionally, Sarah Jessica Parker, Brooke Shields, Molly Ringwald, and Jennifer Connelly all said no to the role of Lydia Dietz before Winona Ryder had a change of heart. Delia Dietz, welcome. Charles. You're perfect. Just perfect. What do you think, honey? Delia hates it. I could live here. And it's within this home that the Maitlands access the world of the afterlife. In case of emergency, draw a door. Knock three times. This is also where we finally get to meet the ghost with the most himself. Maybe we should try that beetle guy. It's showtime. Keaton's first appearance in Beetlejuice doesn't come until 25 minutes into the film, and he only has a total of 17 and a half minutes of screen time compared to the entire 92-minute movie. We come for your daughter, Chuck. I hate that thing. Tim Burton originally wanted Sammy Davis Jr. for the role of Beetlejuice, though that wasn't the only major difference from his original version. The original script was actually a horror film that featured Beetlejuice as a reptilian demon who transformed into a small Middle Eastern man to interact with the Maitlands and the Dietzes. Lydia was a minor character, with her six-year-old sister Kathy being the Dietz child able to see the Maitlands. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it! Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy! Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? What I mean is, can you be scary? And who could forget the famous dinner party scene? It was Catherine O'Hara who suggested the scene use Calypso music. When Glenn Shaddix, who played Otho, died in September 2010, the last song played at his memorial service was The Banana Boat Song by Harry Belafonte. Let's 
Aren't you, Delia? Daylight come and me want go And lastly, we'll end where the movie ends and take a trip to Lydia's school. Yay, school. Like most of East Corinth, this location is now abandoned and vacant. It's actually probably haunted. Probably. Behind me is the school that we see Lydia attend after the Dietz family settles into life with the Maitlands. We see her ride her bike off at the end of the day and go down this path here to go tell the Maitlands about her good grades. The building used as Lydia's school was actually the town's Masonic Lodge, done over to resemble a schoolhouse. At first glance, it features the small town gothic aesthetic that Tim Burton loves, and it's easy to see why he picked this building. I'm sure that he would appreciate the fact that the building has only gotten creepier over time. Now, this is where the film ends, but it wasn't intended to be the last we see of Lydia and Beetlejuice. After the film's success, a sequel was planned called Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, which was to bring back Winona Ryder and Michael Keaton. However, once Tim Burton signed on to direct the Batman movies, the project lost steam. Recently, though, there have been talks about reviving a sequel. After all, you can't keep a good ghost down. about the math test. You have got to be kidding me. We spent the whole week studying for that test. I got an A. So can I? Well, I suppose. Cue the Harry Belafonte. So that'll do it for where it was made. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank you for watching these past couple years. Until next time, happy Halloween, and I'll see you at the movies. Yeah.